take you guys down here again so you can see it. You can see our gap. Very, very square and true to the cylinder. Um, turned out real good. And we got the proper ring gap that we need. What's up, Mopar fam? I hope everybody's having a blessed day. So today, we are working on the BGE 392 build. As you've seen on the last video, we got the crankshaft fully installed. And today, we are gapping rings. So we can install the drop-in forged pistons and rods that we got from MMX. And this is a very important, tedious step that does require quite a bit of time to do it right. We're gonna go over one full install of gapping rings, putting them on the piston, installing the piston and rod assembly, and getting one cylinder fully installed as we gotta do this eight times. Very, very time consuming. So not gonna make a video of doing every single cylinder as it would probably be a week long video so we're going to do one kind of go over everything necessary so with that said let's get to work all right so there is the beast obviously uh what we did i just kind of jammed a paper towel down here just to kind of protect the crankshaft and everything of what it, if we drop something you know get some debris down there whatnot um i got a little flashlight up here just to help out to be able to see the ring gap but basically what we got going on um, first of all MMX has a full installation instructions on the website which I printed off and this is basically everything that they recommend of how to do this it's pretty thorough um, and uh, like I said we're basically we're getting the rings ready so that we can install them um, for our case, because we're running boost and also this would work for nitrous guys if you're wanting to run, you know, pretty good amount of nitrous. Um, but I believe this ring, ring gap measurement is good for like 15 pounds of boost and up is basically what this is recommended for. So that's what we're going with. And that is 0.028 thousandths of a gap. And that is for the top ring and the second ring. The oil ring must have a minimum of 0.015 thousandths gap. And I don't think it's gonna be necessary to really gap those. Um, just from what I've already kind of noticed, it looks like we have more than that from the factory already. So um, when it comes to the oil ring rails, it's basically a matter of just checking and making sure that you have at least that 0.015 gap. So other than that, we just need a few little gizmos. Uh, this is my forever old, uh, can't hardly probably even read it anymore, but Mac Tools feeler gauge set has all different sizes. Um, it does not go all the way up to 28. The furthest mine goes is up to 22. So what we're gonna have to do is double a couple of them. So I have a 20 and a eight to give us 28. So we'll put them together and that'll be our 28. And then I have a 15 out right here for the uh, oil rings to check those. Now, this is pretty simple. Um, something I just put together. This is one of the stock 6.4 pistons that came out of this motor. And what I did is you can see, I just kind of jimmied three washers that kind of fit snug in the bottom of the oil ring grooves and that is my tool to push the rings down in the bore evenly. Um, it puts them down there almost about an inch, which is good enough and uh, works pretty good. You can buy tools spe uh, specifically for that or what you can do is actually take the ring and, you know, push it down in the cylinder and try to measure it, you know, with a tape measure or something. Cause you, you want it down there as evenly as possible to get a 
decent measurement. Moving on, this is the ring pack. So, um, again, we got the drop-in piston and rods from MMX, which is the mall power pack, they call it. And these are their rings also. You know, labeled pretty cool. Um, they come in like this big bag that's separated. So all your top rings are labeled number one. Uh, your second ring is labeled number two, obviously. And then your oil pack is labeled in the three hole. This is the oil ring rails. Um, I did already put uh, both of these down in the bore and we came out with a good measurement. So we don't have to um, take any material off of these. These are good to go. This is the second ring, um, which you can identify as it is fully coated and what I would call dull looking as all your top rings have a shiny surface on the edges is one way to identify them and this second ring i have already filed it is perfect it is ready to rock now i have to do a top ring and that's what i'm going to show you guys um, i'm going to show you what this ring looks like and the measurement we get when when it's completely fully done versus one that has not been filed yet um, for the grinder we are using a manual ring filer that I picked up from Summit, um, you know, a long time ago. We've had this thing for a while, and uh, it works pretty good. They're cheap, and you want at least this to do this job with. Don't get me wrong, you can. You don't want to. Don't be that guy. Um, <laughs> don't use this. One, you're not going to get it very straight. It's possible, I'm, you know, hey, there's some, you, you can, if you're skilled enough, you can do it, but don't use this. This is extremely overkill. One, you could break the ring. Two, uh, you take too much material off too quick and then you're screwed and you got to get another ring set. Three, getting the ring groove straight is very hard. So you don't want to use an angle grinder. You don't want to use this either no bench grinders yes you can make it happen people do it all the time but don't do that get the manual little cheap ring grinder minimum it works good it's not as horrible as it sounds um it takes material off pretty quick so it's not like you're there all day now they do have powered ring grinders if you want to spend the money do it you know you can get cheap ones maybe around the two to mid two hundred dollar range something like that they work great so if you want to spend a little bit extra dough and maybe plan on doing this more than once might be worth an investment for you to do that otherwise that right there gets the job done good old hand power so what i'm going to do is we're going to take the top ring we're going to stick it down in the bore i'm going to show you how my little my little homemade gizmo works um, show you what that ring end gap looks like before we file it and then I'm going to show you what the filed ring looks like with a 28,000 with a 0.028 thousandths gap so you can compare them and obviously I will show you how to use this guy uh, what I would say properly although I don't really think there's probably a wrong way to use it but there is some better ways that you can use it all right so this is a top ring. As you can see, the little shiny surface on the edge. Um, all your, most of your ring, your top and your, your second ring will usually have a marking. It'll either have a dot or for the mall piston rings, it looks like they put an M, basically their logo for the dot. So you'll have that logo face up towards the top of the motor is how you would install these on the piston. Not sure if it really matters for gapping purposes, but we're gonna do it what I'd call the right way anyway. Um, I'm going to turn that light on so you guys can maybe see a little bit better. So this is an unfiled ring. Keep in mind that these rings are not ready to install. They are not gapped for anything. Um, not really even gapped for an NA guy. These rings, most of the time, um, 
won't even fit in the bore without overlapping each other. Um, so just remember, they're not ready installed. You have to do this. Um, it is required. But anyway, we're gonna I'm gonna slide this one down in the bore and we'll see how tight it is. Oh, come on, baby. I'm trying to fat fit my uh, fat rear end around the camera stand here and not take up the view. So it looks like this one, just as a second ring, um, when I did it, just barely has a gap. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my handy dandy piston ring shover tool, I call it, slide it down, take that out, and then let me get the camera off the stand so you guys can check it out and see what it looks like for one that has not been filed yet. There we go. All right, so as you can see, right there that is the gap that we have and i can tell you it is very tight it is not ready to go it is not ready to be installed um, if we was to install these and go make a pass it would 100 percent butt the rings and we would explode and be doing this again with another motor probably so i'm going to pull this ring out i'm going to install the uh, second ring that we have filed already that is ready to go. There we go. All right, I'm gonna get the old piston ring shover tool. Works great. And then put the light back on over here for you guys. Take you guys down again. And if you can see, I'm going to zoom in, that is a 0.028 thousandths gap. So we got our perfect gap. You can see that's filed very good. It's straight. It is uh, true with the cylinder bore. It's not angled. It don't have a V in it. That is a very good ring gap, if I may toot my horn. So that gives you an idea of what we're doing and what it means when people say ring gap and stuff like that. So now let's get a ring and grind it, kind of go through the steps of what it, what you got to do and everything like that to get it to look like the one that we have already gapped. All right, so we have our top ring um, that needs to be filed still so that we can get the 0.028 gap that is required for the amount of boost that we run. We, want to run now there's many ways you can use this there's really not a wrong way but basically more or less how it works you you lay your ring on here you apply pressure on the back here with your thumb you can also use it this way and i honestly i use it both ways and i'm going to kind of tell you why but to start with what we're going to do is one thing I see a lot of people do, and I'm not gonna say it's wrong. Uh, a lot of people say it's wrong, but at the end of the day, I don't really think there's a wrong way to do it as long as you get the results you're looking for. That's really all that matters. But a lot of people try to use these things, and what they do is try to squeeze it together and file both sides of the ring at the same time. I, I don't like doing that. That's not how I was told and taught. Um, the, way, the way I do it, I follow one side and I stay with one side only. And that is the way I feel like is the right way to do it. Um, but that's the way I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Again, there, I don't think there's really a wrong way. It's just a matter of if you get the results you need to get when you get done. All right, that, that's really all that matters. So. What I like to do is I will start on this end of the machine. I push down with my finger to keep the ring from wanting to jump around. 
And then what you do is you push back here, and if you see, when I push back, you see how it brings that ring into the wheel? And it keeps the ring true with the wheel, so when you're grinding it, you, you're getting a straight cut. You're getting a straight grind on it. And then you take your finger, you press down on it, and you kind of maintain that pressure as you're working the wheel. And we start to take material off, just like so. And it's kind of a matter of you're pushing on the back, you're pushing the side of the ring, and you're holding it down with your finger to keep it from wiggling around. It's, 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 you know, it takes a little bit of practice, but more or less, that's what we're doing. Um, you don't want to go too much, but with the amount of material we have to grind off of these since I've already done one, I do know it, it's going to take a good bit of turns to get where we need to go. Um, but like I said, what I like to do, I'll do this side. You'll go a good bit. Um, and then what I like to do at this point, what I would do is one, you want to take some sandpaper before you stick it down in the cylinder every single time. And again, this is, you know, you may do this 10 times before you get the right measurement you're looking for. But when you grind this, you're going to get a little bit of a lip and a burr on it. And before you stick it in your cylinder, you're going to want to sand um, that burr off. You can fill it with your fingernails. So make sure everything feels smooth. There's no lips or burrs before you put it back in your cylinder and especially before you install it to the piston and call it done and uh, send this thing down the road because any burrs on the rings can cause you know maybe a ring to stick or cause a failure or cause an issue with my other ring i noticed that when i would grind it you know one way when i would come back i would flip it on the other side of the machine and i would grind the same exact side again we're not we're not grinding both sides we're just grinding one side so stay with the side you're grinding i'll flip it over on this side of the machine and what i do is i do the same thing okay um except for i'm going to hold it down with my thumb here and what i'll do is i'll push on the back of the ring with my finger i'll hold down the ring with my thumb and that'll be the only pressure i need and then we'll start grinding Now, the reason I flip flop from side to side is I've noticed over, you know, all the times I've ever used this thing and or, for instance, with this motor when we just did the other ring, um, even though the machine's trying to keep you straight, keep you, you know, in line and true, you know, to the angle of this ring, um, it's not 100% accurate and perfect, okay? So, for instance, when we stick the ring in after we grind on this side, when you put it in the cylinder, you may notice that it's it looks a little bit kind of like a V. It's not completely straight. And when, when we take it back out of the cylinder and we come over here on this side of the machine, sometimes going the opposite, um, some, sometimes going from the other side will help straighten it up and keep it very straight. Um, so that's pretty much what I do is I go a little bit at a time both ways until I get to the gap in the f until I get to that file gap we're looking for. And again, a look it's kind of like the uh, in carpentry where measure twice cut once same thing applies here if you take too much material off you can't put it back on you're going to have to get another ring or another ring set for that matter because i don't think you can order just one piston ring you'll have to get a whole nother set of rings most likely so in a nutshell that is how this thing works and how to get it done so we're going to grind this a little bit more we're going to stick it down in the cylinder um, we're going to get our first reading And see where we're at i know we've taken off a decent amount of material i i know we're not even probably close yet but 
I just kind of want to give you guys an idea of what it what goes down. So we're just going to file off these burrs real quick. Um, you know, this very, very time consuming job to do this stuff. You know, it's why people charge so much money and labor, you know, to build engines. Everybody's like, man, it's insane. The amount of money you got to spend to get something done. Well, this is why, because this, this takes a lot of man hours guys to do this. You got to do this to every single ring, um, to every single cylinder. And that's something I want to bring up here also is when you're filing these rings, okay, you are filing those, that top and second ring and oil ring if need be for that cylinder. So for instance, these rings we're filing is gonna be for this cylinder only. Um, every other cylinder could be a little bit different in dimension. So anytime you're filing your rings, you're gonna file those rings for that cylinder. All right, so we got our top ring. We, uh, we did our first run on the file. We're gonna put the dot or in my case, the M for mall. We're gonna put it at the top. You wanna make sure your ring is pretty clean and make sure you're sticking it in the cylinder that you are making rings for. Don't stick it in you know, a different cylinder. So we got it started. I'm gonna get my handy dandy homemade piston ring slapper sticker automatic dropper guy. And I can see that we do have a larger gap. You can at least see it from what I can tell on the camera now. Um, but it's, it's still nowhere near. It's probably about half of what we need. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take the eight thousandths and see if it, see if it will even fit in there. Probably won't. Okay. So eight thousandths fits. I'm going to take the 20 in there and see if it fits. The 20 almost fits. I can feel it trying to go in. Um, but we're definitely not going to get the, uh, the full 28 in there. Now, if I take you guys off the camera. So I don't know if you can see on there, but that gap, you can kind of tell how that, how that first run with the, with the, uh, file or the grinder, it has a little bit of V to it. Towards the very back of the cylinder, you can see it's tighter. And towards the center of the cylinder, um, towards me, it's got a wider gap. That's what I meant by it's, you know, it's, it is, this is a thing that comes with practice. Um, it, um, it's a matter of how much pressure you're putting on it when you're grinding, holding it still, you know, it's hard to get it perfect. But that's where flipping it to the other side. Um, so for the, for this next run on the little grinder, I'm going to flip it to the other side. I'm going to grind some off. And you'll see when we check it this time, it's going to look a lot straighter. And it's just a matter of kind of dancing back and forth. That's, that's how I do it. Again, everyone has their own way. Um, but this is just how I do it. So let's get back to the grinder and uh, take some more material off until we get that 28. All right, so we're back to the little hand grinder here. And again, we're gonna file the same side that we've been filing, which was this side right here. You can see the shiny, how it's shiny. That side is not. And uh, again, first go, we went this, dir this direction. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna basically flip the ring. We're still grinding the same side that we were. We're just doing it from an opposite direction, which will kind of help straighten out this grind a little bit and uh so what we do is i just push it in push the back down put some pressure on the ring down here to keep it from riding up and i'm gonna grind i know my hands in the way right here guys but there's not much not a whole lot i can do here
All right. So we took a good amount there off, I believe. Get all the dust off. We're going to get our sandpaper here. <coughs> and uh, same thing. You can take your finger and fingernail and you can feel the little burr. And it's always going to make a burr because um, you're, you're grinding material. So you're, you're going to have to do this. And again, this is why stuff is so expensive because if you do this stuff right, it is very time consuming. A lot of labor hours. All right, so we got our ring clean, no burrs. Now let's go stick it in a cylinder. We're going to drop it in, give it the old squish. And you'll notice as you start getting some material off, it starts to go in a little easier. And now I can tell we hardly have like a V now. It, it's, a, it's pretty straight. Um, and we definitely have a little bit bigger gap. We might be pretty close right now. So I'm going to see if the 20 will fit. Okay, the 20 does fit. Oops, I moved the ring a little bit. Hang on. Let me reprobe it. So the 20 almost fits. So we're still going to have to go about probably nine, about nine or ten more thousands, I would, I would guess. But as you can see, there's our gap now. It's definitely larger. And you can see it's more true. Um, it's more square to the cylinder. It doesn't have as much V as it did the very first time. And again, I would have fouled it just... A little bit more on this last go around it would be perfectly true to the cylinder um, so that's what I'm gonna do when I go back to the grinder this time I'm gonna stay on that side I'm gonna grind it some more and then we'll check it and go from there and again it's it's just it's a dance fellas it's a dance all right so we're gonna go back to the wheel we're gonna grind the same side that uh, we were just grinding put some pressure on it and spin the old wheel press down a little bit harder on that one again you know the more pressure you put the more material it's going to take off but you don't want to don't want to push your luck i know this gets kind of aggravating and you know i don't have very much patience i am not going to lie about that so but you just kind of you got to take your time guys clean that ring off again and go back to the old cylinder I'm gonna drop it in again same spot get the old piston packer tool we're getting close and that looks pretty true all right so try the 20 again 20 goes right in so we did take off a good bit now we're going to put the 20 and the 8 together so we get our 28. And it is not quite there. It won't fit yet, so we're going to have to go a little bit more. And this is the part that really gets spicy because you got to do very little at a time until you get it right. But as you can see now, you see how much cleaner our gap looks it's very very true to the cylinder it doesn't have a v to it um and that's why i kind of like to flip back and forth on the machine it seems to kind of help keep it true but we're gonna take it out and hopefully do it maybe one more time
All right, so we did a little bit more. Roll back with the sandpaper again. We're going to clean our ring up. And try going back in it again. Get the old packer tool. Looks like we got a nice ring gap still. Nice and square. We're going to get both of our files here. And boom, we're good. Money. Just barely has some drag. Take you guys down here again so you can see it. You can see our gap. Very, very square and true to the cylinder. Um, turned out real good. And we got the proper ring gap that we need. So, this cylinder is done. We can now install these piston rings on this piston. Uh, connect the piston and everything to the con rod and, and fully install it in the motor um, if we want to. I think we're going to save that for another video because this one's pretty long already. This one's, you know, got a lot of technical in it. So I don't want to make this thing an hour long video. But that is the ring gap procedure and how to get it and do it yourself at home in your garage. But with that said, I'm going to get this thing done tonight. I'm going to put this piston together, get it installed. Uh, we'll do a follow-up video of basically uh, putting the rings on the piston, installing the piston to the connecting rod, uh, mounting the connecting rod, torquing everything down, and checking bearing clearance. So stay tuned. We got more to come on this BGE 392 motor for Frostbite to make Frostbite absolutely sick. And most of all, get her back alive. So stay tuned, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget, stay safe out there. Have fun with what you're doing, guys. And as always, we'll see you guys on the next one.